Right, let's talk Wi-Fi for virtual reality. I make a lot of videos on Geek Godin's incredible virtual desktop app and the absolute key component to get it working smoothly and at its absolute optimum is good Wi-Fi. Up until recently, I was running this TP-Link Archer AXE 5400 tri-band Wi-Fi 60 router set as an access point with a few tweaks, which I will cover a bit later. But now I've upgraded to this beast, the TP-Link BE15000 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router. And I wanted to know one simple thing. Will Wi-Fi 7 increase the performance and reduce the latency of virtual desktop in high demand VR games like Le Mans Ultimate, rhythm action games like Synth Riders and FPS shooters like Half-Life Alyx, with all these games running on their highest graphics settings on Big Bertha, my RTX 4080 equipped PC. Before I go any further, this video was an absolute labor of love to make and took me quite a while. So if you do get any benefit from it, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It's been a proper journey, believe me. The journey. This isn't a virtual desktop setup tutorial. If you want to know how to do that, check out this video here. This video is just about the transition from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7 and any perceived benefit or otherwise switching to the latest Wi-Fi standard can bring. For information, I use a dedicated router set up as an access point purely for use with virtual desktop. Nothing else is connected to this router at any time because any interference whatsoever can cause performance issues. Now, I was very excited to unpack, set up and install this beast, but was quite shocked when I went into the router settings menu because bizarrely, the most important Wi-Fi 7 settings were not enabled by default. I thought I had done something wrong, so I did a full reset and rebooted the router only to find the same scenario. I really don't understand why TP-Link would sell a high-end, fully featured router like this and not enable its most powerful tools. You can access the full feature set by scanning the QR code on the back of the router. It'll take you to a browser window and ask you to enter a password. Write it down somewhere so you don't forget. You can then change the settings I'm going to talk about and don't forget to save overall when you are done. If you have any problems, then just use the reset button on the back of the router to start all over again with factory settings. So these are the settings that I enabled and tweaked to get the router working in its optimum state for virtual desktop. OFDMA Mu MIMO enabled a network technology that improves wireless performance by allowing multiple devices to transmit data to or from an access point simultaneously. These two settings were disabled by default, so I enabled them. Smart Connect, disable this to allow the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz channels to be split and controlled separately. Multi-Link Operation or MLO Network. One of Wi-Fi 7's most powerful tools is the ability to send and receive data across multiple frequency bands and channels simultaneously. This was disabled by default, so I enabled it. Access Point Mode. Kind of hidden away in the menus to switch to Access Point Mode. It was in the Advanced Settings, then System, then operation mode. The developer of Virtual Desktop does recommend that if you have a dedicated router that you set it to access point mode. Wi-Fi channels. TP-Link has a built-in smart connect mode that is supposed to pick the most uncongested channels for each separate frequency. Basically, it's utter bull as it just picks the same channels regardless of how congested they are. Now, I live on a small housing estate which is absolutely brimming with different Wi-Fi networks. So I used a Wi-Fi frequency analyzer on my phone to find the most uncongested channel for each frequency, then manually set the channel. Also, just check that the channel width is set to its maximum for each frequency. Depending on your router, this is 40 megahertz for 2.4 gigahertz, 160 megahertz for 5 gigahertz, and 320 megahertz for 6 gigahertz on a Wi-Fi 7 router. Lastly, make sure the transmit power is on high for each separate frequency. It should be by default, but just check anyway, and don't forget to save. 
Now, if you are a Wi-Fi expert and disagree with any of my settings, please comment down below and tell me why I'm wrong. This is the internet, so some keyboard warrior with adenoids is bound to be raging at the screen right now. The test. I have two VR headsets that are Wi-Fi 7 compatible. They are my Pico 4 Ultra and the very high-end Play for Dream MR with its ridiculous micro OLED screens running at an incredible 3840 by 3552 or 4K per eye. The games were Synth Riders for that fast twitch rhythm action vibe, Le Mans Ultimate for that sim racing vibe and Half-Life Alex because, well, I don't need any excuse to jump back into Valve's classic sci-fi shooter. I tried to replicate the same scenario as closely as I could, which was easy with Synth Riders and Le Mans Ultimate, but obviously harder with Half-Life Alex's more freeform combat. All my virtual desktop settings were locked in for the duration, except for Le Mans Ultimate, where I had synchronous space warp enabled. I'll flash those settings up for you now, so pause the video if you want to copy them. Let's move on to the actual test, and I ran the games on three separate settings. Every game on Wi-Fi 6, then again on Wi-Fi 7, and then again using the TP-Link BE15000's separate MLO channel. I'll just quickly flash up the Pico 4 Ultra's Wi-Fi list so that you can see how they appear and that they are connecting to Wi-Fi 7. Just for reference, and in case anyone thinks I was cheating, all Wi-Fi 6 footage was captured using the TP-Link AXE 5400 on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 channel at 2,400 megabits per second. I will then give my conclusion on the results, and then, after that, I will run the exact same test using my MetaQuest 3, which is not Wi-Fi 7 compatible, just to see if it makes any difference. So make sure to stay till after my conclusion for that little nugget of extra information. Excited to see what happens? I know I am, so let's go. Stepping out in my Sunday shoes Twist and turn to the jazzy grooves The moon's a spotlight painting the street Tick tock, the rhythm's got me beat We're To be completely honest, I wasn't expecting miracles from my step up to Wi-Fi 7. What I was expecting was slightly reduced latency and more steady frame rates. What I wasn't expecting was nothing. Upgrading to Wi-Fi 7, as shown in the comparison videos you have just watched, showed little to no change in either latency or frame rate stability. The only exception seems to be using SSW on Le Mans Ultimate reduced the overall latency by about 10 milliseconds on average using MLO, but that could purely be down to the algorithm only rendering at 40 FPS, then AI upscaling that frame rate to 80 FPS, but then that would apply to all three frequencies, surely? I don't know, <laughs> and I'm a bit confused, but what I am sure of is this, there is currently absolutely no reason to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 whatsoever save your cash for a generational leap in technology because with regards to virtual desktop and vr there's no benefit at all which is so disappointing anyway so how does my metaquest 3 perform using the new tp-link be 15000 wi-fi 7 tri-band router i guess you can guess 
But here it is anyway. Quest 3 Comparison. Stepping out in my Sunday shoes. Twist and turn to the jazzy grooves. The moon's a spotlight, pain in the street. Tick tock. So as with the Wi-Fi 7 compatible headsets, running the MetaQuest 3, which is not Wi-Fi 7 compatible, on the TP-Link BE15000 made no noticeable difference, and I feel like I'm wasting my life at this point. But if you stayed for this, thanks for watching. This really did take me a long time to formulate, film, script, and edit this video just to tell you, hey, it makes no difference at all. So comment down below if you haven't died inside yet. Thanks. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.